ask our revered Swamiji from Ananda Ashram, Sri Swami Nityananda Ji Maharaj, to deliver a beautiful message that all of us can ruminate over, to reflect over, and use for our spiritual advancement. So, Swamiji Maharaj, thank you and over to you. Om Shiram Yeram Yeram. Om Shiram Yeram Yeram. Om Shiram Yeram Yeram. Salutations to Parampujya Gurudev Swami Shivanji Maharaj. Salutations to all Mahatmas, brothers and sisters. In everybody's life, purely by God's grace, we are drawn to a spiritual receptor to make us aware there is a higher dimension in our life about which we were not sure, we were not aware. Right from our impressionable age, when we started entering into our life, we were thinking in terms of me and mine. We never had the opportunity to know something beyond that. But at a particular junction of our time, life, God's grace poured in the form of drawing us towards a spiritual preceptor who has stayed in the heights, living as an ordinary human being. If we go through Puranas, Idihasas, Shastras, we may develop a concept. But when it is conveyed to us through a human being like us, it has got a telling effect. That is why the relevance of Guru in our life. Otherwise, books would have been enough, you know. It might be there, we don't know that. Somebody has to come and tell us. So today is an opportunity for all of us to remember intensely how Gurudev drew us to himself. And on this occasion, right from morning 8.30 to it's 2 o'clock, when we are fully welled up with our reverential emotions, reverential adorations, which have come out in the form of soul stirring budgets. This is one way of offering our homage to him. Along with that, if we try to contemplate upon the life and mission of such a saint, probably it might give an added effect to improve the quality of our life and to live up to what we are expected. It was in the year 1987, like all of us, a child was born who was named as Kupu Swami in the southern part of India. And like all of us, he had his schooling, he had his college studies, he became a doctor, he got an assignment in Malaysia at that time. But at the 36th year, God reminded him gently of the holy mission he has to perform, not to go along with the usual common run of life and the internal call came. He left everything, went to Rishikesh, the Rishikesh of at the age of 36, you know, that was the must have been 1923. Just imagine. We are celebrating his 137th Jayanti today. We are trying to go back to all those days. A person who, like all of us, who were born to parents, who had his education, who had a professional career, suddenly the inner call comes 
and the life for which he has been drafted, he has been assigned, that was made known to him. And he left everything, went to Rishikesh on those days. The living condition of Rishikesh is something none of us can even imagine now. In the birth of Shivandashram now, there is nothing there, we were told. Only the other side, so Gashram, <coughs> that side, after the Gashram, that, that side. There was nothing on this side, and uh, one has to live on the Bhiksha that is given at Kali Kamliwala's Anakshetra. Leaving everything, you know, a comfortable life. When he, shift, when he was prompted to shift his priority to a higher dimension in life, it did not come to him like a miracle. He paid the price. We don't know exactly the details, but we could surmise because it was, it was in 1936 that Shivananda Ashram was set up by Gurudev. So this for 23 to 36, 13 years, the severest tapas, the severest self-denial, the firm commitment to scale the heights, shifting the entire priorities exclusively for attaining the realizing the presence of the Almighty Lord of the Universe. And to feel that he is there behind every thought, every word, every deed. Thirteen long years. We were also told that he used to collect the rotis, you know, rotis and satis from the Anakshatra. When everybody has taken, please remember this, so many sadhus were there, he will be, see that everybody is taken and at last he goes there and gets not one or two, as many rotis as possible for what you know, to be given to those who have not taken it. Even at that time, his quality, care and concern for others were rich large in his mind. Did not bother about anything. And next day, if the surplus is there, he will not go again and get it. He, we were told he used to dip in the Ganga water to make it soft. It was very hard. And that, yeah, that was how he was taking it. He had a small kutiya there. And since he was a doctor, when he was seeing that many of the sadhus, spiritual aspirants, sadhakas, were having health problems, when they fight, fall sick, suddenly developed an urge. And when he was in the doctor, when he came back, whatever little saying he had, he forgot about the whole thing, that somebody was able to locate that. And then, that amount, he was able to retrieve and put it in the post office and he gets the interest monthly with that interest he buys the medicine and gives to those people not to for taking him on this particular day we are trying to remember you know we are trying to glorify him but we also try to understand how he became a shivananda no? the transition from kupusami to shivananda ji transition from the kupusami to sadaka shivananda and then Gurudev Swami Shivanji Maharaj, a cordial I say it. On this day, this day is celebrated not only to pay our salutations and homage to him, but also to start from the where he started the life. Because of which all of us are sitting here. Even after dropping the body in 1963, he continues to inspire. Most of us or many of us would not have had the privilege of having a darshan, you know. But still he continues to be a perennial inspiration. What is it that? On the Jainati day we are reminded. 
It was not a cakewalk. He paid the full price for it. And when he scaled the heights, even in, during the process, we can see how the me and mine was totally erased and what took place from me to we and then from we to him. This is the message first he gives to us. Wherever we are, whatever we are, when we are connected with the life and teachings of a master, we also try to dwell upon the silent messages, powerful, vibrant messages. He has given it through his very life. That is why as sadhakas like us, we should always try to go through the biographical sketches of masters. Not from where they ended, we have to go from where they started. Because ended this photo, this photo, you know, this image, we look at it. But to reach this stage, how did he, what, what all was done by him? From an ordinary person, how could he scale his heights? And what the price he paid? That might show us some hints, some clues how to fine tune our life. So this is an occasion for all of us to think. Otherwise, you know, they don't require Jayantis or Samadhis or Sanyas days. It is only for the pe for like people like us who are all who have all been drawn by him. No more the very purpose of our life. If these are, because we are all preoccupied with so many uh, uh, commitments and uh, involvements. As Grihasthas, you have your own duties, responsibilities, challenges. As professional being, you have your own. As, as a social being, you have your own. People like us who are associated with the, uh, institutions, they are under administration. So many things come here. So when these things are preoccupying our mind, there should be some occasion where we are hammered, you know, constantly remember, hey, look here. This is not for, for what we have come. The purpose of life is something different. On this day, we remember that. We try to remember that. We try to go through some of his experiences. May not, we may not be able to go through the entire life in, in one day. But periodical occasions like this, they offer us an opportunity to peep into those vital aspects which will help us to improve our quality of life. And uh, we were also told, many of you might be knowing it, but it is worth repeating it again and again for ourselves. It is not that he decided to buy a land, construct a some in institution like that. Never, never, never. We were also told when we were there in Rishikesh uh, in 2008 to take part in the Shodashi Puja of Swami Chidanji Maharaj. Swami Bhaktanabhananji gave us all these details when we were walking through Gurudev's Kutir. He said uh, Swamiji was staying in the opposite side in a small Kutir. Gurudev was saying. So then it was a it was a property of the Tehri Maharaj, yeah. uh, the king of the Tehri, it was a small kingdom. So he happened to go to London. At that time he saw a 75-year-old or 80-year-old person, fully healthy and active, smart. So he asked him, what is the secret of your life? of your health. He was bubbling with joy also. So he said, it is all I all owe to my Guru. Your Guru? Where is he? He is in India. Where is he? He is in Rishikesh. Rishikesh. It is my territory. My land. What is his name? We are regularly calling him Swami Shivanji Maharaj. And as soon as he came back to India, 
He sent word his people to locate Swami Shivananda who is somewhere in the Rishikesh. So he was, they were able to locate the, the king came there. Gave Sashtanga Pranams. Offered whatever he could. And he said, Vati, I never knew about your presence here. You have blessed my kingdom. Now you tell me what is it that I should do. Shivananda sure. <laughs> had nothing to ask. But people like us will be there, you know, along with somebody. We will have a lot of funny ideas. <laughs> you should do this, you should do that. So they suggested, why not we have a center? Like this, so many people will get benefited. Then the, he said, if we remember uh, right, Swami Bhagavanji showed us, in, hand, in this much of land, you take the other side. That is how the Shivananda came. Nothing was planned by him. Nothing was initiated by him. And he, he found every... We were told all these things by Chidanji Maharaj also during his visit to Ananda That he was fond of spreading this in the sense, writing whatever that wells up in his heart. At that time there is uh, no uh, financial support to get it printed. So, suppose he had some, some devotee writes to him, he will have his envelope, you know, that envelope he cuts it in so many forms, you get something to write and with some pencil, he used to jot down. Then somebody was kind enough to look at it, print small, small pamphlets. Like that, you know, the, it started piling up. So, somebody went and asked Gurudev, you are writing, right? who is going to read? Who is going to get benefited by it? Then smilingly he said, at least one person out of thousand, if he gets. That is what probably God wills. So never on any other basis. It is purely sharing his experience, sharing experience. All Mahatmas. So today we are intensely remembering Gurudev Swami Shivanji Maharaj. It's the same case as Parampuja Swami Papa Swami Ramdas. We used to share the same thing on his Jayanti day. We remember with gratitude how they, from an ordinary person like all of us, how they evolved. And when they reached, when, they, when they, the blossom took place, when it flowered, how it started giving eternal fragrance, eternal fragrance. If we put together the, the data we have got, by 1936, that means 36 plus 13, 49th year, you, when the Anandashram uh, was settled in Impasavi in his 49th year. Then from there, up to 1963, that is another 27 years, you know. In, in 27 years, just imagine, how his words of wisdom got spread, not only in India. In India, he undertook a tour, we were told. And you will find so many divine centers in India. And then abroad. And just imagine, and he continues to be a pioneer inspiration for everybody today, even to a new generation which has not had the occasion of seeing him or going to India or going in the, uh, visiting Shivananda So that's the power, no? From an ordinary individual, how? And we have been blessed to associate. What is it that we are trying to do? So it, with all our... Uh, and during his sadhana days, we can infer, you know, all these details, we are not 100% sure about it. We could infer that in 1923 when he came and in 1936, when there was nothing on this side and when he got this, you know, one by one, Swamiji, so slowly when he started blossoming, people started crowding around him. So then he used to come from the this side to the other side, where there was absolutely no building. 
and there was the Swami Ramkirtha's one library, you know, I mean, not Ramkirtha, Ramkirtha, in memory of Swami Ramkirtha, devotees have set up a small library. It is still there, that uh, building, where Papa was also there. So that is why we were able to go and locate the structure is still there. So we were told, this time when we went for uh, Gurudev's uh, Sanya Centenary, uh, we were told that some Gurudev used to come to this side to avoid the crowd and sit alone in the Swami Ramkirtan Memorial Library. Because he, he that then means what? We have to think about it. He was trying to take to inward journey. All our outer, outer activities under the banner of spiritual sadhana will have the fruition only when we take to inward journey. His own words. Within you is the hidden God. Within you, the immortal soul. Within you is the inexhaustible spirits, spiritual treasure. Within you is the ocean of bliss. Look within for the happiness which you have sought in vain. You will read it again. Within you, look within. Within you is the hidden God. Within you, the immortal soul. Within you is the inexhaustible spiritual treasure. Within you is the ocean of bliss. Look within for the happiness which you have sought in vain. We have been seeking outside, you know. He was blunt in telling us. We don't have to search for anything outside. Because we have been given a wonderful equipment to take to this inward journey. So during these 13 years, apart from his uh, self-denial, simple living, effacing of the sense of individuality, serving, trying to see him and trying to serve him in all creations. Along all these things could materialize because of his intense spirit inward journey. So today we also remember the need to apply our mind on the relevance and importance of inward journey. We may not be able to do exactly like him. We may not be able to imitate anybody. We can still emulate you know, certain things. How can we do it? Each one is unique. Each one is Therefore, each one's path also has to be unique. Gurudev used to say, in one of his lectures, he has said, those who have travelled to Badrina, they will only be able to say how you can travel. So we may not be able to do the same thing, but we know there are certain things which we, we which are of the requisites, prerequisites to put us on the path. So today we should intensely remember because of, for the sake of all of us, he placed his life before us, you know. God made him to pass through all those experiences. Severe rushed. Stay in 1923 to 1936 where there was absolutely no establishment. And from 36 or so, he did not change, but there was an establishment, a, an institution. And what a name he has given, Divine Life Society. I, and our life gets a different dimension. Ordinary life, worldly life, family life, professional life, social life, here is another dimension, Divine Life. What a beautiful word he has got. We are not, we are not just sing, simply reading it. On this day we are trying to remember what the divine stands for. 
a life where we try to identify the common factor in everybody called God, <coughs> divinity. And then, and when that life is blended to that ideal, it becomes a divine life. So divine life society. The moment we hear that word, we should uh, immediately, you know, at least for a twice like this, we should remember the divinity, you know. Just like uh, when we come from Anandasham, the moment we hear about Anandasham, the Ananda, you know, the bliss, for a, for a, for a split second, it dwells up in us. Then we are again back. Okay. Similarly, divine life. And in 1936, how many years now? 64 plus 24. 88 years. 88 years it has been rendering service where there is no limit, there is no boundary. So we are again back again. Apart from our usual uh, any activities, we are reminded today that one should also try to go within because that is the, the spiritual treasure is within. In, in a text called probably you might have heard Vivek Chudamani by Adi Shankara. There is a shloga Aptu, starting with Aptu Tim Kananam Patho Vinishida Yutkarshanam Sivgrati Nikshepa Samshepa Te Nahibahi Shabde is to Nagas. Then it goes on like that. The meaning is uh, we happen to hear this through Swami Chimayandaji in the 60s, but uh, the way in which it was presented to us got imprinted in our heart. There are two families very close to each other. This children will go there, that children will come here. There is no division. There is no otherness. Each one will eat anywhere, either of these. One day, the uh, head of the uh, one family passed away, suddenly. The family became grief stricken, and then the other one, isn't it? The other head and their family rushed in, uh, assisted them, consoling them, and made them to pass through all the rituals, obsequies, everything. And after the 13th or 14th day, the eldest son of the deceased came and told the other person, Uncle, we have no idea about how we are going to live from tomorrow. Because the death was so sudden, father did not tell us how the family can be run. We are at blind road, blind road now. So he said, smilingly patted on their back, your father has provided a big treasure. Now you listen to it carefully. You go to your kitchen. Underneath that oven, there will be a loose tile so far you would not have seen, you remove the trial, choose, preferably after midnight, nobody should know this, and have the necessary tools like crowbar, whatever, and then start digging. Don't get dispirited, dejected if you don't get anything. Whatever debris that come out, ensure that it doesn't disturb the others. But you keep on doing it with patience, perseverance, and under present faith in the words of in your father. And when you keep on doing it, one day you will crow you know, will touch a metal, it will evoke a metal sound. Be very careful, remove everything, and you will find a copper vessel there. Slowly lift it up, clean it. You see that. For generations to come, he has deposited all the treasure. This is the analogy he gave us. This is what Shankaraja says, Aptoktim Kananam, mining. Kananam means mining. So, Aptoktim means a, a guru tells you, a reliable, you know, 100% who knows. It is not a, it is not a, a tall talk. 
it is not a gas word it is something a tangible reliable word so when the guru says the pressure is within you we were reminded because gurudev said within you is the inexhaustible spiritual treasure inexhaustible so when he says that you do that early morning when your mind is fresh you start going within that is called dying digging you know when you keep on doing it when you do that ensure that all those that are obstructing the the, the presence of the treasure that means our me and my impurity is everything we ensure that it does not disturb anybody and then we perseveringly patiently with all faith we do that faith to the master and one then when we go deeper and deeper we may have visions we may have sound and then again go still deeper we will be able to have a glimpse of the treasure within so when he said that we remember we remember Adi Shankara's words, Aptoktim Kananam Tato Varishila. It's a beautiful set, uh, slogan. And when we start doing it, now when the Guru says, within you is the hidden God, within you is the immortal soul, within you is the inexhaustible spiritual treasure, within you is the ocean of bliss. Look within for the happiness which you have sought in vain outside. So gently, Gurudev is reminding us today to remember all these things. Along with whatever activities, involvement that we are doing, it definitely gives us a boost. It has created a wonderful, what do you call it, sattvic atmosphere, conducive atmosphere for all of us. Where we are totally from, it's 8.30 in the morning till this moment, we are totally free from all our mundane thoughts. all our usual preoccupations and mental involvements and all of us are joyfully taking part we were personally you know we were like we were doubtful whether we could sit for such a long time but we couldn't get up such was the soul stirring performance rendered in remembrance of our gurudev but gurudev is also cautioning us Don't limit to that. Along with this, individually, we will try to do the mining now, because he has assured us there is a spiritual treasure, inexhaustible spiritual. Where you know it doesn't get depleted. The more we give, the more it comes. You know, inexhaustible. What that word? You know, kindly think about it. So normally when we give this, it will get empty. But here it won't get empty. Akshaya Patra. It will always get, it become full, 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 full. So such a treasure is within all of us, which he has scaled and he has processed it. And he tells you, hey, don't stop with this. Go within. Try to locate in your own way. How to do that? So in our all family life, worldly, uh, professional life, social life, we try to bring in a dimension. Every time we are constantly reminded of Gurudev's words, the treasure is within. My job is to become aware of the treasure, then possess it, and then, and then what? And then we get lost into it. The so-called sense of individuality gets lost into it. They did not look back. Now we look back our own life. So this is a very powerful message he is giving us today, and this is reflected in the universal prayer. We will also try to go through each and every word. O oh, adorable Lord of mercy and love, Swami Omkarji Maharaj of Shanti Ashram, he has also brought a peace prayer. He says, "Adorable Presence, Thou who art within and without, above and below, and all around, 
thou who art interpenetrating the very selves of our being. He says, thou art omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. We stop there. What is meant by omnipresent? He is present everywhere, eternally present in everybody. This pressure is there in everybody, in all the moving and the unmoving. How am I to do? Every day we are, we, we are repeating this so that there is a commitment on our part to live up to it. Omnipresent, omnipotent. All the faculties, all the capabilities, all the potentialities because of which we are now living a comfortable life. You know? All these things have come from the potentiality that are lying hidden in us. So he is omnipotent. If you are sick, anything that you identify now, it has come from a concept. A concept in the minds of somebody whom God has chosen. We call him a scientist, you know? we call him as the uh, discoverer or inventor or innovator, whatever, it, if that words can be used. So, omnipotent. So, I am, it is tangible, you know, I can see. And then, omniscient. Intelligence absolute. Potentiality may be there. To put, the potentiality should come out, you know. So the prayer should be there. In, in the, the prompting should be there. And thou art Sat Chit Ananda. Sat Chit Ananda. Existence, consciousness, bliss absolute. So we get a picture now. We are, when he says divine, divine life, the divinity is given some, some explanation. It can't, it can't be brought within the ambit of knowables. But we can approximately, uh, approximate it with something which we know. So existence we have got an idea, knowledge we have got an idea, and bliss we have got an idea. But it is not that what we feel, it is something past our exp expressions. For example, suppose we go for a walk in the morning, we see a tree, we look at the tree and immediately the word tree comes, you know. But the, it, it has come out from a language. But something was there even before the labeling was done, you know. Think about it. Something was there even before the labeling. Every object we see, he said, it, it carries a label, a label of the map language. What is that? We are trying to understand what is existence. You know? So when we look at the tree and remove the label, what happens? We have to try. That might lead us to becoming aware of the existence. And then next he comes consciousness. We know that we are seeing, we know that we are hearing, we know that we are sitting. The knowing principle in us. What is that? It can't be explained, but somewhere near the consciousness we reach. And bliss. What is bliss? When we say happiness, normally it is it is it is connected to an object. An object, a person or a situation. So Papa used to mention bliss as objectless happiness. By reading this prayer, he makes, he wants us to go within and to find out something. The what? The indweller of all beings, the life force, the awareness, the intelligence. Grant us an understanding heart. So far I have not applied my mind on those levels. So an understanding heart, so that I, I become, you know, become sensitive. We can interpret it like that. Any, any, there could be so many interpretations. What now wells up in our mind is understanding heart. A heart which accommodates everybody. A, a, under, a heart which does not negate anybody. Which refuses anybody. Any understanding heart. That means, you know, we try to expand from the, uh, from the me to something higher, something larger, something <coughs> wider. Equal vision. Balanced to mind. Every word, you know, it needs a lot of inward journey. 
we try to learn so many things. God will definitely make us to get in touch with somebody who has got a balanced mind. And how, how he is in a position to remain unruffled in spite of this provocation, we will start asking ourselves. Then we try to try to understand what is a balanced mind. Devotion and wisdom. Not merely devotion, not merely wisdom. Bhakti and jnana. Grant us inner spiritual strength. Grant us inner spiritual strength to resist temptations and to control the mind. Now the mind is taking us forward through the sense organs. The sense objects are occupying our mind. We have absolutely no control. So now Gurudev says, if you want to know the treasure within, try to make some effort. Free us from egoism, lust and greed, hatred, anger and jealousy. Fill our hearts with the divine virtues. We remember, Acharya Vinobhaji used to say, which many of us know who are the uh, village life in Kerala, we have this first-hand experience. When a container is there, which is stationary, which, can't, which is not mobile, somehow it happened to be containing a lot of dirty water. So how to fill it, how to make it pure? So he says, keep on pouring pure water. Due to the displacement theory, it comes out. So 1% of pure water, and 99% of the uh, dirty water. Then again we keep on pouring, pouring, pouring. Then 2, 98, 3, 97, like that. Perseveringly when we do that, ultimately the entire thing becomes pure. So that means we fill our mind with pure thoughts. We cannot drive away the down pulling thoughts. So we, we can only try to keep on seeing good in everybody. Goodness is godliness. Anybody who lives a value-based life, we try to see that. Immediately we think about it. This is how the uh, infilling goes on. So fill our hearts with the divine virtues. Let us behold thee in all these names and forms. So this is the ideal I claim. It's difficult for me. Because I have not trained my mind. Right from my impressional age up to this age, we have been thinking in terms of individual only. So individual means, you know, there will be uh, likes and dislikes, uh, rights and wrongs, so many things will be there. But here we have been asked, let us behold thee in all these, thee in all these names and forms. So this, this, first he said, you know, the word the indweller. So the indweller in all being, first I should be able to experience my, the indweller, then only I will be able to see the indweller in everybody. Let us serve thee in all these names and forms. When we see that automatically the otherness will go. And then let us ever remember thee. Even though you are making me involved in so many activities, kindly enable me to remember you. Let us ever sing thy glories so that I will become nearer to you. Let us abide in thee forever and ever. Finally, that is on. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So, let us remember thee. So we devise some method to remember him. This is one method, glorifying through bhajans, through nama chanting. Then we devise some method. Each one has to devise some method. Then only we will feel that we are in him. So far we have been trying to see him outside. We are in him. We have, he has been with us. He is with us. So, this universal prayer, when we uh, intensely go through it with the spirit with which it has been given to us, on this day, on this 137th Jayanti of Gurudev, we are reminded of all these. There, there could be so many, so many dimensions, but these are some of the things that uh, prompted us 
to share with you all. This I have to read today. Swami Chidananda Maharaj, <coughs> in one of his articles, he specifically wanted us. That looking at us, the world should know who our Guru is. Looking at us, the world should know who our Guru is. That means the Guru's idea. So he had drafted, you were able to remember many, there may be a few uh, aberrations. Swami Shivanji's presence is not only confined to the Samadhi Hall, not only to Shivananda Ashram, but it lives and moves in and through us. Please, please, very important. We carry his presence when we are kind, considerate and compassionate. We carry his presence when we are kind, considerate and compassionate. We carry his presence when we refuse to serve even any one inch from the path of purity. We carry his presence vibrantly, dynamically, forcefully when we live our life in a divine manner with determination, humble intention, firm resolve and all sincerity and earnestness. These are the words of Swami Chidanji Maharaj. When we are trying to pursue a divine way of living in thought, word and action, we are manifesting Swami Shivananji Maharaj. Gurudev. We are a vibrant center of that which the world knows as Swami Shivanji. We become a lamp through which His light shines. We become the vessel to hold the waters of His spirituality, His sublime spiritual teachings. We should make ourselves a vehicle of His living presence so that by our life others also become awake and illumined they feel His Divine Presence through our life and their life is also divinized. We move amongst this world of men as the candle imparting our light to anyone whom God brings us in contact with. So this is a, this is a commitment, this is a responsibility, you know. This, this particular word. When we say we are following, we are following the devotees of Swamiji, Gurudev, then it, it, Swami Chidananji wanted every one of us to remember this word. Am I living up, living up to it? I may fail and I forget, but immediately I should know, no, I am pulled back. I am get back into the rails. So once more we leave. Gurudev Swami Shivanji's presence is not only confined to the Samadhi Hall and the uh, Shivananda Ashram, he is not only all pervasive in Shivananda Ashram, but it, it lives and moves in and through us. We carry His presence when we adhere to truthfulness. We carry His presence when we are kind, considerate and compassionate. We carry His presence when we refuse to swerve even one inch from the path of purity. We carry His presence vibrantly, dynamically, forcefully when we live our life in a divine manner with determination, humble intention, firm resolve and all sincerity and earnestness. When we are trying to pursue a divine way of living, in thought, word and action, we are manifesting Gurudev. We are a vibrant center of that which the world knows as Gurudev Swami Shivananda Maharaj. That's why he said, looking at you, the world should know who your Guru is. We become a lamp through which His light shines. We become the vessel to hold the living waters of His spirituality, His sublime spiritual teachings. Let us make ourselves of His living presence so that by our life others also become awake and illumined. They feel His divine presence through our life and their life is also divinized. We move amongst this world of men as the candle imparting our light to anyone whom God brings us in contact with. Sorry for the extension of five minutes but we couldn't help it. Hello.